Hey everybody, welcome to my page today. We are going to um, work with gel presses. And I have a few different gel presses and I will show you some of what we're going to do today. I'm just gonna get onto a new page. I'm going to show you some things you can do with gel presses. Um, these are some ideas. This was done in, uh, on separate, just on computer paper. And then I put these images into my album, my into my journal. These also were done. These are some different techniques you can do. And these are some things that I will show you on uh, this video or others. These were done with uh, acrylic paints. And this is one of my favorites. This was done with bubble wrap. So I will show you how to do that um, a little bit later. So anyways, I'm going to show you some of the things we are using. And these are just some of the items. But uh, I'm just trying to figure out, so I have a very squeaky chair. I've got to get a new chair. It's driving me crazy, to be honest. Um, we are probably going to use my small journal. Um, so I'll find a blank page. And sometimes I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes I pre gesso my pages, other times I don't. Um, these ones are not pre gessoed. So I got blank pages. But, anyways, I will show you these. These are done with the gel press petites, um, they're the gel printing pl plates. And you get three of these in your package. And the sizes of these are the round one here is three inch, the square is three inch, and so is the triangle. So they work awesome, and I will show you how they work. Um, we also use sometimes I do my larger ones, the big the big square or the rectangular gel press. So, anyways, with these, pretty much anything goes. To be honest, I tend to with some of my my projects, I tend to paper clip them down so my pages don't go floating on me. So that's what I'm going to do with this. And uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to create now. Okay, so some of my items I'm using with my, my gel presses are the Distract Soxide, the Faded Jeans, the new one, the Speckled Egg, the Mermaid Lagoon, and the Tumble Glass. Oxides, distressed oxides work great on here. Uh, I do not recommend trying to use just a distress ink or any kind of permanent ink because it will not come off. You can also use acrylic paints. They work great as well. Myself, I prefer using the ox distress oxides from Tim Holtz. They work awesome, so I really enjoy them. So with these, you peel off the back and you can peel it off like that. Sometimes I don't peel off the other side because I like to keep one side clean. So you can leave it like that and just use it like that. It's also sometimes easier to pull up. So I'm going to leave mine like this and I will show you how this is done. We're going to do this in layers. See the awesome, awesome blueness. Looks so cool. You can do it like that. Or I'll show you. You can do it this way as well. I find it's just easier sometimes doing it the other way. But it's all personal preference, to be honest. It truly is. So this is using the circle. And this size too, the smaller ones, um, they work great as well with tags or smaller items. I really like this size because it's very easy to handle and uh, just a lot of fun to use. So, you just put it on like so, a little bit more. You might be asking yourself if you've never done this before, why did I not re-ink there? Because I want to have some open space so I, when I layer, I can have 
some of the other colors come through. See, you can't see a whole lot of it, but there's really so much ink in here and pigment that's popping onto your page. Look at that. And on here, it didn't look like there was much. So I'll maybe do one little light covering and we'll pop that thing right there and maybe right in there. And that's it. So some people like to clean their their gel plates in between. I personally don't. I just go to the next color because layers are a lot of fun. Um, sometimes you want to stick with the same color scheme so you don't get the dark color onto your other inks. So this one I'm using the Mermaid Lagoon. And look how awesome that is. So cool. And these are reactive with water, so I will show you what we will do later using a little bit of water. When I look at this right now, it just reminds me of old jeans. I'm not really sure why, but it reminds me of old jeans. So that is the Mermaid Lagoon. Next, I'm going to go to tumbled glass. You could do a lot of different things with this. Like there's so many different things, um, mermaid related or under the sea or summer or clouds, fishing. You could do a lot of different things with this. Uh, you could do this on pages as well. Don't don't just think I'm doing this just because it's on a journal. You have to stick to doing it on a journal. That's just not the case. You could easily do um, cards, scrapbooking layouts, all kinds of things with this same technique. So, okay, so there is our tumble glass. And next, we are going to do the new one, the speckled egg, which is a really cool light color. It's kind of like a mix between, I think, blue and gray. It's just a nice finishing light color that could be anything. Yeah, I really like this color. It's really pretty. So, pop that on. And again, using the round or using the triangular one, you're going to get the same type of same type of uh, result. It's just different shapes. Okay, the shape won't change anything. So there's that. I am now going to incorporate some other colors into this, and I think I'm going to use a little shabby shutters. On the larger ones, you can also use a brayer. Um, that helps a little bit too if you want to mix your colors because you can definitely mix colors and put them on here as well. With this gel press being so small, um, I don't tend to use a brayer on these small ones. On the larger one, I definitely do. Um, sometimes it just makes it easier. And sometimes I want to maybe do an ombre effect or, um, you know, just kind of come across and, and do like different colors or even change up your color because you can make your own colors with these as well. So that was the shabby shutters. And I think now I want to incorporate a little bit of a yellow tone. So I'm going to use fossilized amber. And this one, I'm not pushing down as much. I'm just trying to get into all those other little nooks and crannies. Maybe we need a little bit of 
orange. So I will use, hmm, should we go for carved pumpkin maybe, let's try that. Go for carved pumpkin. screaming summer. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for now. And I highly recommend if you um, have Tim Holtz oxides, I have four of these, um, these, these tins that hold the inks, I highly recommend them. They fit the oxides and they fit just the distressing inks and they work amazingly great way to hold your your uh, ink pads okay so next I am going to do a little bit of this and this is just to show you the technique of this I've got out my mister my distress sprayer I'm going to just give it a little bit of mist of water and I'm going to show you what happens with that for any of you who know about distress sinks and things It'll give a little bit of a, a nice little effect. I'm also going to give it a little bit of a spray. And I am going to use the Distress Oxide Spray. This one is old paper. And I like this because it also covers a little bit of the areas you may not have gotten. It's really neat. So we're just going to let this dry and we'll come back to this in just a minute. somewhat dried. We have bubble wrap. We have just your standard bubble wrap you normally have. And we have these bigger bubbles. And I really like working with these. As you can tell, I've used this a lot. And I tend to leave the color on it because it's really cool how this color will add to other projects. So I'm going to show you what we do with that. We are going to take, I'll maybe try our round one this time. We are going to take this, actually you know what, I will show you on the big one. So I will show you how you can use your big gel press. There is also these gel plate storage tins from Dilutions and Dina Wakely, uh, put up by Ranger, and I highly recommend them. Um, this one is, uh, it holds 11.6 by 10.2 by 0.5. Um, my gel plate I have in here is actually a little smaller than that one, but uh, I use it nonetheless, it works great. And I could probably even store my other gel plates in here that I've been using. You can see on this one, 
This is not clean whatsoever. I used black on the other side last time I used it. Um, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. And I am going to use on this one, hmm, let's try, we're gonna do peacock feathers. feathers. We just pat that down like so. And I am going to use broken china on the other side. You don't want them to touch and I will show you why. So there is, I don't know if you can see, there is a little break in between. And the reason for that is because, again, we don't want our inks to touch. But we're going to get out our trusty brayer. I use a speedball brayer, and that's the bigger one. I've had this one for quite some time, but you can still buy them. And we're going to go up and down with our brayer. I know you can't really see much, but the color is there because it's right on my brayer. So what we're going to do with this one is we are going to use... The bubble side goes down on top of our gel press. So just pop that down like so and lightly, gently push it down and then pull it up. And you can't see, but I can, that there is an impression of the bubble wrap on there. So let's see if this will pop onto our creation here. So. This works a lot easier in books if you're using a book where there's equal pages on either side because you don't have a different level of your pages so it actually reaches straight across. Oh I like that because it pulled up some of the old color. I don't know if you can see that but it's pulled up some of the old color and it looks so cool. So there's that. The other thing you could do and I'll show you is the big bubble wrap. So with this one because now it's got blue on there and previous colors I had, which I really, really like. We are maybe going to do, I want to go for something a little bit darker. So maybe, actually, disregard that, I'm going to go lighter. I am going to do mode lawn. So we'll use a mode lawn. We're going to put that on there and do the same type of technique we did before. So, mode lawn, and I am going to do with that one, this is going to be a bright one, and I'm going to do the Twisted Citron. Nice bright color. So I can see our little lip. I'm putting a little bit less of this. And Again, on our bear, we still have the blue. I'm going to leave that there because it's going to mix all of these. See, look at that cool color. So we're going to mix all of that up. That looks so cool. So we're going to take our big bubble wrap, and I use this one a lot. So you can see all that color. I tend to like to do blues and greens, apparently, because there's a lot of it on here. So. Um, some of my bubbles are starting to deflate so I'm gonna have to get some more bubble wrap and that's the nice thing about this because with the bubble wrap you can uh, just take it from anything if you order Amazon or any kind of parcels or packages you can just take this from that you don't even have to buy it so it's pretty cool especially now when you want to try and reuse and reduce and recycle and repurpose okay so I can see that normally I push the whole thing down but like I said my bubbles on that one have deflated because I've used it a lot so with this we're gonna pop this one down the same way we did the other one and push it down you don't have to be overly gentle or anything just push it down make sure you got every area and voila I don't know if you can see that one. 
but it's a very cool way to make very neat backgrounds. So there is that for backgrounds, and I'm going to show you another way. So, again, I'm going to plop this back on a page to hold it down or else with it being a book, it's going to move. So, got that, and with this, it is very easy to wipe off. And it comes off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my baby wipes. Baby wipes work awesome for any of these kind of crafts. So good. Um, and this wipes right off. So comes right off your hands and works great. And you can use these on your gel press as well. And gel plates, these work great. Um, also, you can get gel press and gel plate cleaners. Um, I have some. I can't honestly say I've ever really used it. It is recommended, but um, if you can't afford it right away, it's not really necessary, I would say. It's nice to have, but it's not imperative you have it. So, see? Look at all that color that comes off. And this is one thing where I like to usually save it because it makes for cool, cool layers. But I'm just giving you a tutorial and a demo on how you can use this to the best of your advantage. So like I said, this wipes off really, really good. Do not use soap. I don't. I just run it underwater because with it being an oxide, even with an acrylic paint, it will come off. So I've got that on there. Then I just grab my paper towel and it just comes straight off. It works great. I wouldn't have this sit on here for very long, um, like paints and whatnot, because they might not come off. But for me, that's not a huge deal because I do like some of the effects of that. Um, so I am going to show you another thing you could do for making a background that is very cool. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and liking my videos. Please remember to subscribe and and like my videos. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook feed. I also have an Instagram page and a blog. So I'd like to thank everybody who helps me with my, my different processes. My awesome son who does my, uh, my uh, YouTube videos and Facebook videos, my daughter who helps with my Instagram, and my good friend for many, many years, Sandy, who has worked with my branding. So anyways, I'm going to show you this. This is from Caravel Studio, and what these are is it's texture printing. This is an impression uh, plate. It's for mono printing. This is 6.6 .6 by 6.6 .6 inches. And I'm going to show you what can you do, can do with this. Really, in many ways, it's very similar to what I just showed you with the bubble wrap. So what we are going to do is I am going to do some completely different colors. Uh, I am going to do some pinks. So we are going to use pickled or sorry picked raspberry on this one. And again, I'm going to layer my colors. So there's lots of awesome pink goodness on that one. And on this one, I'm going to do an abandoned coral. I'm going to do three colors on this one. Remember, don't really want them to touch. Abandoned coral on that one. And then on this one, I will do, what should we do? I will do a, hmm, maybe I'll do a purple. So I will do a shaded lilac. So hopefully you can see all that. I'm going to use my other brayer. It's a smaller brayer, but it works just as well. I tend to usually use this one, but this one works great as well. So I'm going to mix the colors up this way. I'm going to do it sideways. This is how you can kind of come up with somewhat of an ombre effect. Sorry if there's background noise and we have construction in my area, so hopefully it's not too loud. 
had to have the windows open because it's just too hot today. Okay, so there's that, and then you turn it on its little yellow pegs so it doesn't touch the ground. There we go. So with this, again, you put it down like you did with the bubble wrap. So I'm going to do it like so. You can see the effect already, and then you try and just line it up the best you can. So there's many ways you can use this. This is how I use it. And I really like the effect. It looks really cool. So then that. You could always put this down on your page, but you're not going to get the effect you would using the gel press. So I'm going to pop my plate on here. You could also put color down ahead of time if you wanted to and have another layer behind. But I'm just showing you this so you can actually see what these look like. And these are very, very cool. This one here in Canada at my local scrapbook store was $25.25. Um, they vary in prices, but it's very good investment. So look at that. How cool is that? So very easy, very fast, um, lots of different colors. Then with this, you could just go through with your pink with a paintbrush and just lighten that up or go around. I on purposely did it off so you could see the side and then I'll just go back afterwards and touch it up. Same with here, once you take that off you can touch it up. But very very cool ideas. Gel presses are a huge, um, a huge help with making backgrounds. I highly recommend them. Some people think they might be a little bit more on the pricey side but they are definitely worth the money. Um, I really recommend checking them out. You could go to your local scrapbook store, try and support local if you can't go online or Amazon or wherever um, but yeah you can use these again with distress oxides um, you can use them with your rayers things that you have around the house like bubble wrap um, but yeah like I do not use them with uh, any kind of permanent ink distress ink uh, archival ink any of that stuff do not use those um, you can also use like I said before you can use your uh, acrylic paints. So those all work great. Um, have fun with it. If you have any questions, don't forget to post them or ask. I'm here to help you. And please remember to subscribe and follow the pages. And if there's any videos you want to see down the road, don't forget to, to mention it. Also, uh, don't forget, post video. new videos are posted on YouTube Sundays on our Super Scrap and Sundays at four o'clock Mountain Standard Time and on Facebook later in the day. So I hope you enjoyed this. Have a lovely day and we'll talk to you soon.